Lights, camera, action. The 2016 Tribeca Film Festival comes to a close this Sunday, and one of the films that made its debut at the festival this year was the short Super Sex. The comedy starring Kevin Nealon, Elizabeth Perkins, Ephraim Ramirez, and Ruby Modine tells the story of two siblings who found a very special birthday gift for their aging dad, played by Ed Asner. What kind of birthday present do you get the man who has everything? What? I know what we can get him for his birthday. 500 bucks? Dude, are you serious? Do I look like a dude? No cash. Donuts. There's donuts in the machine? It's not my first time doing this for some old guy's a birthday present. You got an ATM machine? <laughs> Super Sex, starring Kevin Neal. Let's some chopsticks. Elizabeth Perkins. No. Yes. No. Ruby Modine. <laughs> Efren Ramirez. Over there. And Ed Asner. Ready? <laughs> the writer and director of Super Sex is Matthew Modine, the veteran actor who has starred in such critically acclaimed films as Vision Quest, Full Metal Jacket, and Married to the Mob, and in the Showtime series, Weeds. Matthew Modine joins me now. Matthew, what a pleasure it is to have you here with us. My pleasure us. to be here. Thank you very much. Now, I got a lot of questions, but I got to ask you, what's the patch about? Well, the, uh, you should see the other guy. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, I wish there was some really dramatic story about it, uh, that I was trying to uh, uh, be like John Ford, the great director John Ford, who used to have an eye patch. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's an infection. I, got a, it, I think it's called a Chilean. Oh. Yeah, it's just a miserable, it's a clog. <laughs> Duct in your eye, and it's. It, I, I look like I got in a fight with Mike Tyson. <laughs> oh, but you it gives you character. It gives me character. <laughs> yeah. So Matthew, Super Sex is, is a very, very funny film. Congratulations. Thank you very first much. First of all, why did you decide to make it, and why did you decide to make it as a short film? Well, I was at the New York Times building, and they give these wonderful talks. And and that particular day that I was there, Eli Wallach was the guest, and. He invited me to come backstage and, and talk to him. And he said, before I left, he says, I got a joke for you. And he told me this joke, super sex. And it, it kind of haunted me. And I thought it's such a funny, funny joke that it could be an interesting short film. And so I, I scripted it and uh, opened it up. And I had my daughter read it. And she said, I think it's really good. I want to play the prostitute. Yeah. And so I said, okay. And then she's, she's fantastic. Thank you very much. Yeah. She's out there. She's beautiful too. Yeah. Yeah. And she can sing. She's, she sings, she sings <laughs> the credit right, song right. that love me like I like to be loved. And, um, she's a terrific singer. And, um, she said, and I know who you should cast in the parts. Uh, and she suggested, wow. cause when she was a little girl, she's always been with me on film sets and she became good friends with Kevin Nealon and Elizabeth Perkins when I was doing weeds. Yeah. And she said, you should cast them to play brother and sister because they work so well together. So I called them and they said yes. And then the important part was, was finding someone to play that, the father. And there's a poker game that I get invited to every once in a while. And so James Garner used to play in the game. The great Charles Durning used to play in the game. And Ed Asner plays in the game. It's a lot of old Hollywood legends. And, and uh, I told Ed about it and he said, I know the joke. He goes, but let me ask you a question. Are you going to play the prostitute? And I said, why would I play the prostitute? And he goes, because it'll be easy for me to say I want the soup. Yeah. So. By the way, was it hard for you to cast your daughter as a prostitute in the film? It was a little weird, but you know, we've been working together. We've directed, I've, I've directed her on music videos and worked with her on, on, on her music her whole life. She's been, you know, she went to Greenwich Street Music School played the piano and she's been singing these kind of body trashy songs since she was a little girl. She just <laughs> likes those things, you know, fever. You must have been she, a great father, man. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So listen, you know, all of us at Metro Focus watch this film and all of us had the same question. Why is this just a short film? I mean, it's got a great premise, great characters, great actors, of course. Yeah. Why not a feature film? Um, a full length feature film? Well, you certainly could do it. But I mean, the reason that I made this film was there's there's two features that I have that I want to make. and And so, I wanted to put a film into a festival that would attract a, a strong producer, an honest producer, a good producer, who would look at this work and say, what you did, that this is great, why not make it into a feature? And then begin a relationship with, with, with a good, honest producer who would help me to find financing for these two feature films that I have that I want to make. Now you have students from the New York Film Academy working on this film, how did yeah. that come about? 
Well, I studied acting here with uh, Stella Adler at the Stella Adler Conservatory of Acting. And, mm -hmm. and one of the things that Miss Adler taught me and the other students was the importance of giving back. That all of these experiences that we have in our life, that it's, it's important to give people the opportunity to apprentice, you know, to, to come to work on a, on a film set or in a, in a, in a theater and, and see what it is to work in a real environment. So the owner of the New York Film Academy, the late Jerry Sherlock, was a good friend of mine. And so whenever I was making one of my short films, I tried to grab some of his students to come and work on the film to have practical learning experience. Yeah, that must have been great for them. It really, yeah, it's <laughs> they great. really know it's, what they're doing. It's great for me too because, done. you know, with a film that doesn't have a budget, you yeah. know, it's, it's wonderful to have those students uh, working for free. Now you also recently produced and narrated a very different kind of film, uh, a documentary uh, called uh, The Brainwashing of My Dad. Yes. Talk about that. So The Brainwashing of My Dad is a story about Jen Senko, the, the director of the documentary, and how she started to experience changes that were happening in her father. She, he, uh, Frank Senko was a Kennedy Democrat. He was somebody who, who was very open-minded and liberal, and what happened was he was he used to ride to work with a group of people in a carpool, and then he got transferred and he had to start driving to work uh, by himself. And so he needed some company, so he started listening to AM radio. And 98% of AM radio is conservative talk radio. Mm -hmm. And so what started happening with the steady diet of conservative right-wing uh, radio, that her father started to turn into somebody who was really stubborn and, and closed-minded, who hated the, the, the Democratic president at that time, hated Obama, hated Clinton, you know, thought that the country was going to be destroyed, that it was being taken over, that everybody needed guns. And she, she just thought, what happened to my father? So, Matthew, you, uh, if, if I read correctly, you're going to be starring in a Netflix series? Yes. Talk about that. Well, it's called Stranger Things. It's on Netflix, as you said. And I'm working with a, a, a wonderful young lady named Winona Ryder. And an, <laughs> we and know an, her, and I think. another one, yeah. And a, a young girl named Millie Brown. And she's, uh, her character is called Eleven. So that means that there were 10 people that came before her, like Heinz 57. <laughs> what it is, uh, I've abducted this young girl because she has very strong extrasensory perception. She gets angry with me and, and tears a hole with her extrasensory perception in this world and opens up a rift into another world. Wow. And out of that world comes a monster that starts taking people away. And one of those people is Winona Ryder's son. Right. So the entire series, I'm trying to find Eleven to get her to close this, this wow. rift that she's opened up. And Winona is trying to find her son who's right. been abducted. That's so it's an adventure. It's a fascinating yeah. story. It's kind of if you took Stand By Me, Poltergeist, and E.T. and put it in a blender. <laughs> you know, it's kind That's of, it's very exciting, yeah. Well, Matthew, I got a million other questions, but unfortunately we're out of time. Thank you so much for joining us. Super Sexist is a hilarious movie. If you get to see it, please do. You won't regret it. Matthew, thank you thank so much. Thank you very much, yeah. The film Super Sex will be playing at the Tribeca Film Festival through Sunday. For future screenings information, you can follow the film on Twitter at Super Sex Movie.